135 years after the iconic Statue of Liberty was sent to New York City, a new Lady Liberty is on its way to the United States of America. But has the US renewed its vows with liberty, democracy, and freedom? And can its internal and foreign policies today be considered a benchmark for the so-called free world? Soon after the Statue of Liberty was sent in 1886, Spain ceded the Philippines to the US. Seeking colonialism, the US was faced with a Filipino independence struggle. According to the US State Department, the US killed more than 20,000 Filipino combatants, and more than 200,000 Filipino civilians were killed in US concentration camps as a result of violence, famine, and disease. Despite the US playing a vital role in defeating Nazi Germany, declassified documents have revealed many of the US's scandalous dealings with the Third Reich. This includes direct collaboration from the American company IBM and its founder, Thomas Watson, that stretched into the war years. According to a Guardian investigation, George Bush's grandfather, US Senator Prescott Bush, was also a director and shareholder of companies that profited from their involvement with Nazi Germany. And finally, US government officials in collaboration with the CIA actively recruited and worked with known Nazi war criminals such as fascist ideologue Emil Augsburg who was employed in the US's crusade against Soviet Russia during the Cold War. Despite the overwhelming victory of the Allied powers in the Second World War, the US detonated two nuclear weapons on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan, killing more than 200,000 civilians. This remains the only use of nuclear weapons in the history of armed conflict. At the start of the 20th century, the US shaped or installed governments in many countries around the world, including neighbors Panama, Honduras, Nicaragua, Mexico, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic. During the Cold War era, the US reached its peak of foreign tampering and interventions, including the 1953 CIA-backed coup in Iran against socialist leader Mohammad Mossadegh to reinstall the autocratic Shah of Iran, and the 1961 Bay of Pigs invasion against Cuba's Castro, in addition to 638 attempts to assassinate the revolutionary leader. According to a report published in the New York Times, the US led at least 81 overt and covert known interventions in foreign elections during the period 1946 to 2000. The US's fight against communism meant that the US committed its armed forces extensively in several proxy wars, such as those fought in Vietnam and Korea. The US involvement in Vietnam cost the lives of some 365,000 civilians. This includes massacres committed by US troops against unarmed civilians, such as the Mai Lai Massacre. Vietnam has stated that 2 million civilians on both sides and some 1.1 million North Vietnamese and Viet Cong fighters were killed. The US extensively used chemical warfare during this period. A US program, codenamed Operation Ranch Hand, sprayed 20 million gallons of various herbicides over Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos from 1961 to 1971. After the 9-11 terrorist attacks in New York City, the US launched another crusade, this time against Iraq and Afghanistan. It lied and claimed that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. It didn't. The US invaded anyway, resulting in the death of more than 1 million Iraqis in the ensuing invasion, insurgencies, and civil wars. The US practice of torture, rape, and other war crimes in Abu Ghraib prison were also exposed. The US's protracted chaos in the Middle East gave rise to groups such as Daesh, their reign of terror across the Arabian Peninsula and beyond. This is not to mention the US's own active torture and detention base in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and its global rendition program. The US war in Afghanistan in 2001 resulted in the death of more than 240,000 people in Pakistan and Afghanistan, including more than 70,000 civilians. But is this all really a surprise in a country that was built upon slavery and the genocide of its own native indigenous population? As a UN Secretary General once said, there is no difference between diplomacy and deception. And so, if the Statue of Liberty is supposed to represent the US's outlook to the world, it is arguably a deception not only to the world, but more importantly, to its own people.